Robert, welcome to Dubai. Hey, thanks it's for having It's great to have you on the podcast, as always. Yeah. Um, you know, we're here, it's, a, it's, a, it's an emerging, emerging market as far as like technology and marketing is concerned, and it's such a huge uh, privilege to have you on the video today. For those of the people in Dubai uh, that don't know who you are, and it's actually quite shocking slash disappointing as to how, how little the marketing and technology industry knows people like yourself. Oh, there's people and in San Francisco who don't know who I am, so <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but like, don't but beat them up too much. <laughs> people like yourself, uh, Kevin Rose, Tim Ferriss, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, in Dubai I've noticed they just... Those names go over a lot of people's heads. So yeah. why don't you please just give us a, a kind well, of nutshell been... summary of, of who you are? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Robert Scovel. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, go around the world and interview tech executives, mostly startup executives, but sometimes uh, people who work at Microsoft or Google or, or Oracle, that kind of thing. But y usually, I'm looking for the startup who's doing something new, you know, even newer than Uber, which is sort of crazy because Uber is only four years old. So right. You know, um, but I, I'm always looking for uh, either new technologies or new businesses that are building quickly to a global scale. Um, and uh, I've been very fortunate. My, my uh, Siri was launched in my son's bedroom. Um, I was one of the first ones, or the first one to see Flipboard. I was the 79th user of Instagram. So I get to see things pretty early, and therefore I get to, and I get to see a breadth of things. So I get to see a pattern happening before anybody else, and that's why I can write a book like Age of Context, which is all about sensors and wearable computers and big data and how it's uh, making a new kind of software possible. You're the archetypal influencer. I mean, there are yeah. so many people around the world that follow almost every social media media feed you put out from Twitter to Flipboard to obviously Facebook where you're, you're one of the dominant voices in technology. For the people that are kind of getting their heads around what an influencer is here in Dubai, how would you describe an influencer? And tell us a little bit about how brands see you. I mean, at the core of it, I would say it's somebody who can influence somebody else to do something. Yeah. Which is hard. Yeah. Because first of all, you have to have somebody listening to you. Yeah. And they have to think that you're good enough to warrant uh, taking action, you know, buying something or or doing something, you know. And uh, I've been fortunate that to be early in blogging. I started blogging in 2000 and I built a, a sizable audience. Um, and then I got a job at Microsoft and it got even bigger. I, I, when I left Microsoft, I was getting uh, 4 million views a, a month on our little video site that we were doing. And so that, that just continued to uh, to the place where I'm seen as one of the influencers or uh, people that a lot of people uh, listen to or, or talk about. But the truth is, uh, if I pitch a, 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 a you know a, a crappy thing to you, you're, you're going to write me off. So I, I work hard on making sure that if I say this is really, really important, that it actually is really important. Otherwise, uh, I lose my influence. I'm always trying to keep my influence and, and trying to... Uh, reward my audience with something new that nobody else is showing them. How do you remain authentic as a, as a journalist and as a blogger and oh. as a publisher? Because these people have got to have budgets in the millions, if not hundreds of millions, to get someone like you to say that their stuff is good. Yeah. And the temptation must be there with the, the worldwide parties people, that you go to with the rock stars and stuff. You know, someone brings Bono in front of you and says, here's a new app. They're trying to get you to write something knowing that people will listen to what you say. I interviewed Neil uh, Young at CES, the, series, the Consumer Electronics Show. <clears throat> and, you know, just because you have some celebrity on doesn't mean anybody's going to listen to him. Right. How, how, many, how many people have bought, bought a Pono player, the Pono player that he makes? It's pretty nice, but it's not very convenient. And, uh, you know, you see it in my comments. My comments are open to the public. So if yeah. I pitch something and everybody's like, no, that's not going to be a good yeah. thing. You can talk, but word gets around when you sell. Uh, when you sell, uh, sell out. Uh, I when guess. you sell out. Well, and sell your audience out and not tell them. Right. If I say, hey, I just took a hundred thousand dollars from you to to pitch your thing, that's one thing. Yeah. Everybody knows. Right. If I admit it, if I and I always disclose where I'm getting uh, uh, free things from, or or uh, if I get something free to say something, or if I uh, get paid, I disclose that. Yeah. Because I, I believe the audience deserves that. Right. And and this world changes so fast. People can connect the dots so fast that you'll destroy your your relevancy. And then what do you have? You have nothing. Right. right? You have no, no reputation. 
And, and you as an individual in, in the various countries that we've hung out in, Dublin, London, and so on, you are a magnet for entrepreneurs. When we met in London, so many people would just come out, just have a drink with you. Yeah. Yesterday, we spent a bit of time together over lunch, and it was just a table full of incredibly interesting people. Have you been able to benchmark, at least in the first 24 hours that you've been here in Dubai in the Middle East, where the where the ambitions and where the sentiment is in terms of entrepreneurs in, in, in Dubai? Does, is this a region it's, that excites you, this limited time you've spent here so it's far? It's a new ecosystem, and everybody in the ecosystem says, yeah, you know, five years ago, nobody really wanted to start a startup, and now it's just starting, you know. So it's, it's, it's not a Tel Aviv, it's not a, a, a Beijing, it's not a San Francisco. Those are probably the three biggest places where you see big companies that are, have a global impact coming out of uh, maybe London. Uh, this Dubai is only 15 years old. Right. I mean, the city is only 15 yeah. years old. So, and all, and all of a sudden, this uh, city has sprung up out of nowhere, and it is becoming now a tourist destination. So you're seeing tech conferences and other kinds of conferences here. You're seeing uh, entrepreneurial activity that's re more regional focused. You know, like. Uh, uh, who's the competitor of Uber here? It starts with a Kareem. Kid. Kareem. I yeah, met with the a C. Yeah, yeah. I met the CEO this morning. Okay. And what do you think? I, I think that's really smart because he he sees a way to compete with Uber uh, uh, on a regional basis, yeah. right? And there's a few competitors of Uber around the world like that that focus very regionally and and do a better job or or see a like he he uh, has cars with. Uh, uh, you can pay cash, seats, yeah, child seats, and, yeah. and pay cash, yeah, because there's a, a lot of credit card usage in the in the emerging markets. Mm -hmm. So you know he can exploit a, a local market better than Uber can coming from San Francisco. Mm. And so for you to get to where you've got to now at 50 years old, how would somebody looking at this who's discovered you for the first time uh, out here in the Middle East think to himself, "Well, I, I, I like what Robert's doing. I yeah. feel like that's the kind of career I'd like to have for myself." What are the lessons you've learned getting to where you've got to in life? Yeah. And if someone was looking at you saying, you know what, that would be one of my ambitions to be a guy like him, what advice would you give? Well, I'm really a media company. I, I mean, I'm not a company, but I'm right. a media brand or yeah. something like that. And if you're trying to build a media brand or a media company, you're trying to build a tech crunch or whatnot, um, I, I recommend finding a niche that nobody else is serving, mm -hmm. but that is getting more important. So. Uh, covering to buy startups. Doesn't seem all that important today. There's not a whole lot, right. a, a whole a large number. TechCrunch is probably gonna ignore it and, and or isn't gonna do a good job. But you can start out, there, maybe there's 15 startups in, in this area, maybe a little bit more than that. So you'd start writing about just to buy startups. I can't do that, mm. TechCrunch can't do that. Mm. So you become now the the girl or the guy covering Dubai startups. And yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. your little blog is getting more and more important as the ecosystem gets more and more important. Yeah. And then uh, maybe you get so important that you start covering all of Middle East, right? right. And you have, maybe you, maybe you get, get to the place where you can hire a couple of people to cover you know, Israeli and uh, uh, Iranian startups because there's another, I'm speaking at an Iran uh, startup event. So there, right. there's a, there's, the startup ecosystems all over the Middle East that yeah. are springing up. So now, now maybe you become the Middle East guy, not just the Dubai guy, right, or right, the right, Dubai right. girl, or the, yeah, you know. And all of a sudden, you're being seen as the expert on this part of the world and the entrepreneurial activity that's going on here, and and it keeps growing. And maybe you get bought by AOL, well, or or maybe you buy AOL. Well. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. this stuff can change so fast, right? That. It, it, it's, it's building a media brand, right? And it's, it's about building an audience, keeping the audience uh, in a place where they trust you and, um, and will take action when you say to take action. You know, because that's really what you want an audience for, right? That's right. why brands would, uh, you know, why Red Bull would sponsor you because you have an audience that trusts you right. and, and believes that you know where the next thing is coming from. Right. So, so tell me, um, you know, working working in and around the agencies and the brands here, I hear a lot of um, account managers, account directors, senior folks here having frustrations with with talking to their brands about getting on board with new technology and new social networks. Yeah. Uh, 
all I hear over and over again without calling out any individual names of brands or, or senior folks is, you know, the, the brand managers don't get it. They're not putting budget behind it. You and I both know, you know, working in the US and the UK, that everybody has <coughs> got a smartphone now and everybody is engaging with a series of apps. What are the consequences for I don't brands in the Middle East not getting their head around it? I, I, I look at it as uh, where are people spending their time? I asked this morning at the conference. Right. I, uh, where have you posted in the past week? Right. And I said, LinkedIn. And, you know, 60% uh, of the hands went up. Twitter, eight, 75, 80% right. of the hands went up. Facebook, 95% of right. the hands went up. Um, and so that, if you're not, if you're not listening to that mm. and understanding where people are spending their time and getting their information and talking to their friends and, and you're not putting money where they are, I mean, I, it's like buying an outdoor billboard, but you put it in the middle of the desert where nobody drives. But that's my point. There are so many brands and so many brand managers and so many people even in agencies that are considered to be forward-thinking agencies here that are just flat out in denial about yeah. where consumers' attention is and the fact that everybody's walking around like this. Uh, their competitors are not going to be in denial. Right, yeah. You know, I mean, Gary, you know Gary Vaynerchuk. He has yeah. 500 employees right. in a few years. Yeah. Why? Because he bet early on social. Yeah. He saw the trend early. Yeah. And if you're not in social today, I don't I don't get that. I don't get how you keep your job. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, because that's where the people are. Right, right, right. Even old people. It yeah. used to be just the kids would do this, right? Right, right. No, I'm talking to people who are 50 years old at a conference and they're yeah. all on Facebook. Yeah. If you're not on Facebook, you're not reaching them. And if you're not reaching them, you're not spending your dollar wisely. So, or you're... Your money wisely. So, so let's take this opportunity then to leap even past. I mean, we're, we're so done now with social networks. It's almost like a, a two years ago conversation. But well, looking five into years, I mean, I, five I, I wrote ago, a book yeah. about vlogging and social stuff. Uh, Early two thousands, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine years ago now. Let's talk about the, the next stage. I mean, yeah. heading into twenty sixteen. One of the things that I'm super big on. I've been using yeah. Oculus Rift for uh, for about a year. Tell me about what's happening with uh, with virtual reality yeah. and any other things that you find interesting. Talk us through this device well, I, right here. I, I'm using a camera now that does 360 degrees. Yeah. Because I see this uh, new thing coming. YouTube just turned on the ability to view this camera about a month ago. Wow. It's a brand new technology. So explain that from the ground floor. Now, what <clears throat> so virtual reality is putting a mask on. Well, you don't even need a mask with this. Uh, this is a 360 degree camera, so it, it grabs all around you. Right. So if I'm showing you a headquarters, like. Like, um, if I wanted to show you what Google looks like, you know, Google's headquarters, or what I, what, you know, what the, the bay in Dubai is, I was shooting with this. Yeah. Last night. Um, I, you want to see 360 degrees instead of just uh, like your but camera. But to, to consume so, that, you need to put the eyewear no, on? No, you don't. Uh, YouTube lets you scroll all the way around. Okay, okay, and okay. YouTube now supports 360 degree even on a web browser. Wow. So you don't need the headset. Now, when you get the headset, then you get to look around. And, right, oh, I'll right. look at you for a little while, man. I'll look at you yeah, there yeah. and I'll look around. You know, and uh, it's immersive. Right, right. And for brands who want to build a... a who want to take you someplace and and um, show you something? You know, this is for travel, right? You know, if I was Emirates at Airlines, I would be betting big on this. I would yeah. take this camera everywhere Emirates flies. Yeah. So now you can experience what it's like to be in Moscow, or yeah. what it's like to be in London, or what it's like to be in Shanghai, or what it's like to be in Bali, or what's Right. It's like to go to Yellowstone National Park, right? right? And and you just look around and it's like, wow, I want to go there. And, and, and how does that? How, how does much that... travel is that going to drive? Yeah, yeah. How many people are going to get excited about travel just because they can see what it's like to be in Yellowstone right. National Park? The same way that you know? if you see some concert footage on a phone, you think I have to be yeah. at that concert next year. Absolutely. But this is that times infinite. I mean, this is that time. That's on steroids, right? Yeah. With this experience. And you were talking about sensors as well, and the best example of this. I've not seen yeah. many of these in Dubai, to be honest. So just yeah, if you I sort of show it to the camera, yeah. uh, the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch. Uh, here we are at version one. What should what should the marketing community and the and the and the tech community from startups right through to brands be thinking about this new real estate that Apple has drawn people's eyeballs towards? Um, I, I think it's not just about this. It's about uh, we're now able to market where you are, hmm. and we're seeing a, a raft of companies. Uber is a, is probably the most famous example. You pull out your phone. You say, "I need a ride." 
the driver sees where you're standing and you see where the driver is and you see the driver coming toward you on your mobile phone. Right. It, it serves you. It comes to you. It's, it's at where you are. Right. You didn't have to go to a taxi stand. Right. You didn't have to go to the taxi. It, it comes to you. Yeah, especially and, when the weather in Dubai is so hot that if yeah. you're waiting for a taxi, it's really a painful yeah, experience. you don't want to go out in the street. Right. You want to just sit in a bar and order one, and then yeah. uh, when it gets close, you want to walk outside. Or your watch just vibrates, and you go, okay, it's two minutes away, or it's one minute away. No, we're seeing a, a, a range of new technologies. Uh, I, I call them beacons. Yeah. Uh, beacons are little radios that spit three numbers into the air, uh, and your phone can tell how close it is to the beacon. Yeah. So we're at Coachella Music Festival in the United States had 160 of these beacons around the field. Wow. So as you walk around, it, your phone told you stuff. Right. Hey, you're standing at the VIP section. Why don't you come in and have a beer? Right, <laughs> you know? right, right, right. right. <laughs> you know, that kind yeah. of thing. And or you know you get some loyalty points or here's the art you're standing in front of right there can be a beacon underneath a picture and so your phone can say hey that this artist just created but this are we going to see people walking around like this the same way same way we yeah. see people walking around I, like, what's the relationship I think that people eventually are have? there'll be more of that yeah the problem is the screen is uh, is um, uh, small so. I, but is that on purpose? Do you think Apple have thought about it that way to not yeah. completely submerge the, yeah. the person? I mean, maybe to protect the person from addiction by um, keeping it a little bit smaller. This is really good for um, for lightweight things. Right. Walking around. Yeah. And it buzzes and it tells you something like, uh, you know, when, when you ask it to navigate you, like if you want to go uh, to the sale or to, uh, I, I don't know the building names, but yeah. if you... It'll beep. It'll uh, tell you take a right here. Right, right, right. And it'll touch your skin. And, yeah. And if you turn the wrong way, it'll tell you, hey, you went the wrong way, and then it'll re re again, yeah. navigate you. The basics are there to do this kind of system where it, it helps you live your life. It tells you things that you need to know right. at the time you need to know them. But the world needs this world needs to get a lot more contextual. Yeah, it still isn't uh, contextual enough yet. It, 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 the, the the fundamentals are sort of there, but I, I, in five or ten years, this world is going to be uh, much different. It's going to know who you're sitting with. It's going to know what where you are. It's going to know what your calendar, what what you put on your calendar. So like right now, I, I put this meeting on on my calendar. Right? right. So why would the watch bother me? And if somebody wants to deep dive into that, we may as well do a quick plug for your book now as well. So yeah. there's, you've really gone into that subject in depth. Give people like a kind of a, a 15 second summary of what answers that book has with well, regards to context. Well, we talk about this new world. Uh, wearable technology. Wearables, uh, sensors, because there's a sensor here. Yeah. And it knows something about me that it didn't know a week ago, right? And it data. It knows my heart rate. It yeah. knows how, how good an exercise I am. Yeah. So now uh, it can play games with me. It already is playing games. Hey, why don't you go for exercise? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> why does my watch need to tell me that? Yeah. But it does, right? And uh, uh, it can tell you other things. Uh, soon there's going to be other sensors. I, I visited Samsung and talked to the guys who are building the sensors, and they're saying, oh, yeah, we're, we're thinking of sensors that are going to study your glucose level for diabetes or... Uh, other startups that I've talked to say there's a possibility uh, that this would save your life. It, it, it might, in the future, be able to predict you're having a heart attack right. before you have it. You know, there will be more sensors on us. Right. They are going to listen to our speech. Yeah. They're going to study our blood flow. They're going to listen to our heart rate and uh, other things like... As blood flows through you, it makes a sound that right. can be picked up by a sensor. It also has a color, oxygen levels and other things uh, change the color of the blood. Right. So if you have a sensor that can see that, uh, you can tell things, right? So we're going to see a whole bunch of sensor packs that are going to come out for our skin and, and other things. Um, there's brain sensors. I mean, if you get really freaky out in you know, yeah. 10 years... There's going to be things that you're going to put on your brain, maybe like these glasses, yeah. that are going to uh, study your nervous system right. and your your psychological uh, behaviors, and uh, be able to say, "Hey, you seem a little depressed right, today." Right, right. So, on and on. It, medicine is changing. Taxis are changing. Yeah. Shopping is changing. Education. I mean, education is a two-hour conversation in itself, absolutely. right? In terms of the way that's being spun in its head. Education is changing because of how we're able to to sit in a hotel room and, and learn how to code on right. and, and, and a plural site or a, a whole range code of Code Academy and so many code different sites, yeah. Right? Um, 
and on and on. Uh, a lot of things are changing. It's really interesting. And speaking of health, drones. Yeah, drones. <laughs> drones. Drones is. I mean, and, and that's the thing is that I, when I put this video out to the people out here in Dubai, now that I'm, I'm based between here and London, it's like I want to kind of give people a high level summary, but each of these subjects, whether it be drones, whether it be education, whether it be like neuro data collection through sensory technology in yeah. itself, you could build a whole three day conference just around those yeah. subjects and yeah, undoubtedly speaking, we will. I'm speaking at Cards and Payments here. And, yeah, and, right, uh, there's another one, just Payments. Just talking yeah. about Payments and how, uh, you know, apps like Downtown or uh, Topinga are changing how people yeah. buy things. T T Topinga is an app that college kids use and 70% of all transactions at Santa Clara University are going through Topingo. Right. And um, that's incredible. If you think forward, yeah, because Facebook started that way, right? So Topingo, I, I was so interested in what you said about this yesterday. Topingo is an app where they put a physical box, which is an infrastructural move. They put yeah. a physical box inside, let's say, a cafe. A kid wakes up, he's got a lecture at 9 o'clock. He wakes up at 7.30. He needs his flat white coffee. He orders it from Topingo. Topingo says, sure, show up at the Starbucks in 24 minutes or whatever, your coffee yeah. will be waiting. He doesn't need to go to the counter. He doesn't need to pay for it. Yeah. But that then, that then for brands is an interesting one because brands then become a pipe, yeah. right? Because you're not engaging with the customer service. You're not doing anything. You're literally going into KFC to get your bucket. You're going yeah. into Starbucks to get your coffee. When you sit down at a restaurant, you're not engaging with the menu. You just order what it is. Yeah. It sends it to the chef. Although, it comes out. you know, in such a world, if I own the Pete's and you decided on Starbucks, hey, maybe I'll bid to get your business. Right, right, right. Maybe, maybe I'll say, hey, there's nothing waiting for you. Yet. For you today, if you cross the street, I'll give you one for free. Right. To see if I can get you into my restaurant. Right. If you own Costa or Tim Hortons or somebody like or that. Or I'll right? give you loyalty points. Right. Or I'll, uh, you know, I'll start building a, a networks with other retailers. Hey, if you buy a coffee with me, why don't you buy a coffee and a sandwich? We'll give you a 10% discount. Right, or right. we'll give you loyalty points, extra loyalty points. Because then you end up with yeah. combined offers, right? Yeah. Where if I buy a coffee from you and a sandwich from the place down the street, yeah. my total bill on my app gets reduced by 10%. Maybe not reduced, because it, 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 let's be honest, this stuff is going to be used to increase sales, not decrease. Right, right. Not, not but there'll be some loyalty points or things loyalty like that. Loyalty points. Nature. But let's say I have a Starbucks. And at three in the afternoon, I know the data. It's empty. Nobody comes in because right. everybody buys their coffee in the morning and right. maybe on the way home at work. So maybe at three, three to four, I send everybody a note. Hey, half off the lattes right now. All right. of a sudden, I have people coming in right. and using my, uh, you know, uh, uh, and I'm all of a sudden making more money because I'm using a dead time. Yeah. And, uh, and in Dubai, it's even crazier because once you say half off latte, because there's such a delivery culture here in the Middle yeah. East, you could just say, sure, send it to my office on your yeah. watch, and it's on the way. You don't even need to pop in there to go and pick yeah. it up. Just as a final closing, I didn't really want to end with this, but what about when something starts off as an avalanche? And you know, I'm going to refer to one thing here, right? Which is, which is tidal. And also the increased amount of celebrities. I mean, Snoop's uh, just created a, a $25 million fund for something that we can't talk about in Dubai. But, yeah. but what do you think about the, the, you know, there are people that are credible that people have got time for, people like Ashton Kutcher and, yeah. and people like that. And you now see that, um, uh, is it, it's Ben Horowitz, right? Who's yeah. pulled Nas in on a few uh, bits and pieces. We're talking heavy on the hip hop thing here yeah. as well. But, but what do you think about that? Like when things start mm. off well, well built with that, with that celebrity and that money and that capital? Um, you, I like are we going to see more of that? Probably because uh, I think Apple's going to... I think where this is going, a piece of it, it's a club. If I was at Apple and I had $130 billion and I had Jimmy Iovine who started the Beats brand and, and knows everybody in the music industry, yeah. I'd be like, how do I build a club? How do I uh, maybe buy nightclubs in, in exotic places and say only people with Apple Watch get into the club? Right. Know? Now, what's happened is I think... At least I've gotten smarter about how marketing works. So I know this game, and uh, uh, we know it's a game, and we know we're being misled by the game. So I think Tidal comes in and, and just puts celebrities up there, and it's like, really, do you, do you multimillionaires need more money? Really? Right, 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 right. For every multimillionaire Madonna, Lady Gaga type, there's a, 150,000 independent artists at, who are singing to a bar with five people, in, right, 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 and struggling and doing it just because they love it, uh, and and dreaming maybe someday I'll make it big or mm. you know, and, and most have even given up that dream. They're just trying to play music. They're trying yeah. to have fun for for the local bar. Mm. Um, you know, if if they had played it different, the storyline would be different. This is what. 
that's why I, I usually don't start out with companies talking about social media. It's not about social media. It's what's your story? What mm -hmm. and what do you want your story? It's a kind to of be? oxymoron, right? I yeah, and I just don't think they built the the story right. The product is actually pretty good, but let's be honest, Apple owns the music fans. Yes. Ninety percent of the people who go to Coachella, which is the most influential music festival, and ninety percent who go to South by Southwest are using iPhone. Right. So when Apple comes in with Beats, they're doing a music uh, uh, service for Apple. Right. I, I don't get how anybody competes with that. Mm. Uh, I think that'll be pretty dramatic. Um, now, the rest of the world is on Android. Right, right. So I don't know that Beats is going to be so popular on an Android phone. Mm. But uh, on an iPhone, I, I don't get how a title competes with that. And they didn't signal to the world what, what makes them different. What, well, what, makes what, if, them what if Jay Z now goes into the, you know, Jay Z's got great relationships with like the, the and we're, we're focusing on Jay Z, I know there's a whole yeah. team behind him, but, but he's obviously got great relationships as a music artist with people like Live Nation, Ticketmaster. Yeah. What if he just says, okay, well, as a streaming service, we kind of messed this up in terms of, and it's difficult to reverse that. What if we now say, okay, Tidal is going to be like live concerts and it's like, a, a, you know, Tidal Nation, like for example, yeah. like Tidal meets Live Nation the, meets the Rock Nation. The thing is they need content that's exclusive and interesting. But is that and enough still even to have exclusive content uh, when things can be pirated? And uh, Isn't it more about this? Isn't it more about Tidal be offering almost exclusively virtual reality concerts? Well, that and, would be a whole nother, right. that would be a new brand. Right. Um, and I think there's a new business for uh, Oculus Rift for music, absolutely. Yeah, when doubt. I get my Oculus Rift, if I let's say I spend a thousand dollars on Oculus Rift, there's going to be a few things I want. I, I want a couple of video games to show the kids, yeah. you know, to let the kids, and maybe a shoot 'em up, maybe a, a, you know, uh, some casual games, you know, the usual kind of games. I want at least one or two examples of a great video game for this. Yeah, some of my best in class experiences. I want to see a couple of new movies that are designed for experiential movies. Mm. That takes a different skill set than somebody using a, a 4K camera. Right, right, right. Uh, so there's going to be a need to be a new movie company mm -hmm. that uses, well, better cameras than this, but similar cameras to this right, right. that does 360 degree. Uh, and then I'm, music is certainly going to be one. I want yeah. I want to see a whole bunch of music concerts where I you know, I can watch, you know, from Elton various John, premium seats, yeah. Skrillex, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. uh, be in a living room with Prince for a private oh, show. Like, wouldn't that be with, awesome? Yeah, if you're awesome. sat there with Prince and you've got Paul McCartney here and everyone's just jamming and you're like, uh, and the interviews. And the, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that'd be know? cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, Sat here in this hotel room with me and you geeking out talking about yeah, technology. Well, maybe, you know, <laughs> or something know. more exciting. <laughs> yeah, maybe, ex maybe more exciting. But you know, having a 360 degree experience like Prince playing here, yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be I, unbelievable, I'd right? Want, I would want that here. Or even on the mind. flip side, you get to sit in the Houses of Parliament for the election or the Congress or whatever it may be. Yeah. Dude, it's always so much fun to talk to you. I want to be yeah. really respectful of your time. I know you've given me so much over the years and today especially. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, it's been a great pleasure hanging out with you in Dubai. Is there any way that the folks watching uh, across the Middle East and of course the world where the rest of my audience is, where they can contact you and start following Facebook. you? Facebook. Facebook is your number one de facto uh, choice, right? Yeah, you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but Facebook uh, is where I spend most of my hours and yeah. where where I do the most interac interaction yeah. with people, and it's also where my where the best network is because everybody's on it. Right, right, right. Every, anybody who's not on Facebook, you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, yeah. every time I give a speech, I ask that question. You know, who's on Facebook? And there's always one person in the back. <laughs> I'm not on Facebook because I have five girlfriends and they're yeah. all mad at me. <laughs> yeah. and you're, and you're, Too much drama. Well, this, and, and you know, and you post ice bucket challenge as well. Like every new video that I put together now, I'm thinking, okay, what clips are going to go on YouTube? You know, yeah. maybe the, and maybe even the long form version. But I'm always thinking about micro content and yeah. paralleling well, it onto, onto Facebook, on Facebook as well. Yeah. You know, and just doing this right. And, and so if, if you don't grab them yeah. in that quarter second. Yeah. See you later. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what uh, I, that's what I would want to really think through with Gary Vaynerchuk or other people who are doing these agencies. Yeah. How are you going to do those three things? Stop, play, and then convert. Well, I'm sure two titans like you could easily get together in, in on, on either coast that and, like and, and have book. that conversation. Yeah, that sounds like a good book title. Stop, play, and convert. Stop, play, and convert. Yeah, yeah. Could Is be that a jab, jab, hook? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I'd, I'd, well, I'd love to see like a, a collaborative, collaborative effort with you know folks like you where you kind of put out and I think that's what's gonna personally I mean yeah. just to end here I think what's gonna happen next is that you're gonna have 
you know, Tim, who puts out his kind of content on on health and life hacking, and and now his podcast, which I just think yeah. you know he's done so well Some with that. Some of the that. podcasts are really great. Just I've brilliant, just... yeah. In fact, my agency, Creative Content Agency, was originally set up in when I was establishing it, at least in my mind, in two thousand and three, two thousand and four, as a strictly podcasting agency. Yeah. We bought mics and mixing boards and things like that, and uh, and obviously YouTube then spiked from there onwards. But I, I think that the same way that you'd have like a Jay Z and a Kanye album, like Watch yeah. the Throne, I think eventually you're going to have a Scoble and Vaynerchuk or a, you know, you've already got like Tim Ferriss and uh, Kevin Rose putting out combined content. Yeah. But I think you're going to start seeing more and more of that, like collaborative where they're, they're both putting their perspectives in. I know he just did that thing with, uh, I know Vaynerchuk just did uh, with Jack Welsh on yeah. Ask Gary V and that was awesome, right? Yeah. So I think we're going to see more and more of that coming in, more celebrities coming into the world, technology moving forward. It's a really positive time and obviously you're at the front of it. Your efforts are much appreciated. Thanks. Thank you very much, Robert Scoble. Thanks. Stay tuned. Wherever you saw this, it's not even worth saying subscribe on YouTube anymore because you probably saw it on Facebook and then who knows any other video, Twitter video. Please subscribe, please follow. You've got Robert Scoble, myself, Raj Katecha. Appreciate your attention. Thanks very much.